Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com. So, I did a video previously where I went through some of these lovely Japanese domestic market cassettes sent to me by Matthew Hajisavas. So, we did the CD2, we did the Axia PS1, we did the Sony Gig 2, and we did this Keep CDX. So, we'll take these out of the equations, because this is the second video, we're going to concentrate on these ones. So, what have we got? Well, let's have a look at this one first. Panasonic PX1. Now, Panasonic, when you think about it, Matsushita, massive electronic company, but I don't think they ever actually made their own tapes, did they? I mean, they, they had the little dalliance, well, they did, they had the dalliance with the Angrom metal evaporated stuff in the early 80s. But after that, they didn't really make their own tape. I mean, Technics branded tapes from the 70s, the ones I had were TDK, and I think all the rest, I think they were all TDK made. It's strange that they didn't actually make their own normal tapes. It's like they they made the metal evaporated ones. It didn't work out because they were expensive. And they didn't bother with audio tape again. They just rebranded stuff. Uh, video tapes, I think they still made, and, and camcorder tapes and stuff. But yeah, audio tapes, Matt Sushita didn't really uh, make many. So let's have a look at this Panasonic PX1. So if you look around the back, you can already see... These look like Technics hubs, don't they? Sorry, Technics hubs, TDK hubs. So, and this is probably a TDK shell. I, I'm imagining this is gonna be the same shell as the late maybe AD, but if we look here at the range, you know, we've got the PX, the PX1, and then the PX2. So this is probably, I, I reckon this is gonna be a rebranded AD. But other than that, yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is, Zeta S, 280 yen. I love finding ones with all price stickers on. So, let's open this up and have a proper look at it. And I know I know, you're used to me tearing them off, but I'm I'm liking it more, doing it more delicately. It, it, just, it just feels right. It just feels right doing it more delicately than just tearing the things off, especially when I only have one of them. Ah, now, this shell, if I can get it out, I mean, that's the only thing about opening it this way, they, they don't just fall out easily, which is a shame. You have to work at them a little bit, but like everything in life, working at it makes it more satisfying. Right, there we go. This shell, yeah, this is definitely a TDK shell. We've seen this shell before. Um, I've seen it on um, a kind of obscure TDK tape I've got, which is called a, a CDing walker. I think this is the same shell as that. Um, it's nice and rounded. It's, it's rude. It looks good. Yeah, this, this looks like a, a very nice, decent cassette. We look at the, uh, the J car. I mean, it's, it's like, ooh, it's like a slim sort of case. We're at the front. I'm not a fan of these. Put the bit of plastic there. Thank you. But, um, yeah, I mean, stickers. Matt, almost totally blank J card. Well, it's a late cassette, so there we go. But the cassette itself, it looks pretty decent, nice looking. And like I say, I think this is probably going to have AD tape. Now let's just have a have a, a look at the colour of the tape. Let's have a look. Wow. I don't know if you can see that in this light while well, I've dropped me big, but this is very translucent tape. You know, you can see through it. Now, that makes me think maybe this could actually be AR tape in here because I know late AR had very translucent tape. You, were very, you could see through it, and this you certainly can. So I'm thinking this could possibly be a TDK AR in disguise, which would be interesting. Now, let's have a look at the bad boy. The metal... GPX 90. Now, I do believe this GPX range came to the UK. I don't know about the metal, but I know that I've seen the, uh, in fact, I actually bought some of the Type 2 version of this. So, but this is just for car audio. Really? So how do I record anything onto it? Because I don't know of any good car audio recording decks. And you see, marketing people, uh, they wanted to write film scripts, but they weren't good enough. Anyway, right, so let's have a look. 
Heavy duty and heat resistant cassette mechanism, extra wide dynamic range, low distortion. And on the back, ah, this is we've got one of them sideways opening ones. Which, you know, when you think of a car audio, most you know, like storage in cars at the time for cassettes were designed for them to open the traditional way, not this way. So it's designed for car audio and uh, they, they make it different. Anyway, right, let's open this bad boy up. Now, I'm thinking on this one, yeah, that this could be in the unhappy shell. What do I mean by the unhappy shell? Well, let me just check first, because I'm thinking this is the unhappy shell. And I'm also thinking this isn't going to open the same way because it's got one of these funny sideways cases. Yeah, exactly. It's going to open like that. And then down here, isn't it? I think. Let's just see. Ooh. Right, there we go. Yes, this is the unhappy shell. Look at it. It looks so happy. Oh, your little tears going from the corners. But it's supposed to look like a car. If you look at the, uh, the wrapper, it's supposed to say it looks like um, it looks like one of the Ferrari PF Modulos, if you know what that is. But uh, yeah, so it's in the unhappy shell, but uh, it's got the really cool black and white Max L hubs. These turn up in certain things like, um, they turned up in European market XL2 S's, but they were mostly covered up by the shell. And they showed up in some of the, uh, the Boots cassettes, which they made for Boots, the chemist, uh, and the American ATA XL2. But I really like these, they're really moody these. But other than that, yeah, it's got the GPX shell on it. I say it's a sideways opening case, which is pretty, yeah, there's not many of them. A, a tiny little J card. Look at that, it's Ickle. It's an Ickle J card. Mm. Um, pretty plain stickers, but yeah, so. Right, I'm, I'm trying to think what the thoughts are. Why the J card is only half that side when you put the cassette in. I mean, is it something to do with the design? Yeah, I think it is, isn't it? Because, yeah, to get that in there. Do you know, so this is all scratched, even though it's just been unwrapped. But, but at the end of the day, this is a Max L Metal, so it'll probably have MX tape in it. So we all know this is going to sound balls. But, yeah. Let's move on to these two. Right, okay, so this one, this spanking new, didn't come from Matthew Hadjisavas. This came from Peter Trappel, so thanks again, Peter. When he sent me a load of JVCs, he sent me this one as well. So, uh, yeah, spanking new. Oh, you see, I don't really want to open this one because I know my daughter would love this because she loves, well, she's a young girl. She likes stuff that's pink, and she's already got, like, loads of Axia... Hello Kitties, and she loves the Memorex Clown cassettes and the Scotch Screamers, so she'll love this one. So I'm going to give this one to her. So I want to open this as carefully as I can so that I can wrap it back up for her afterwards. But then again, this is a Denon, and when have we ever come across a bad Denon tape? Never. Right, let's have a look at this. So it's a slightly pink tinted shell. It's a type one, so it's probably going to have the DX1 tape in it. But yeah, it reminds me a bit of, um, there's a thing, I got some Gold Stars, which were really good cassettes, and they were called like Beach Party and Beach Festival, Summer Festival, DJ and all that. And the, you know, it's all, it's all about just having uh, a bit of imagination with the slip sheets. But yeah, this is a very... Jolly looking little cassette that I'm sure would appeal to the people they're trying to appeal to, but I don't want to spell that out in case they offend anyone. But uh, yeah, they've gone on the whole hog. You've got neon pink and blue stickers, and that's all it says on there. Oh, I didn't show you the back. Oh, there's nothing on the back of that, so, so yeah, I'm sure that'll just be a very decent little type one. And now the Sony ES. And if you look, like, like I say, I don't know when these were, but this Sony ES was half the price of this Panasonic PX1. So 
it makes that PX look relatively expensive and maybe it was a premium cassette, maybe it is an AR, we'll find out, but that's just being sold cheaper, this is nearly half the price. So, you know it's Sony, anything with ES in it means that it's it's the good Sony stuff, it's usually the Japanese only Sony stuff, but position high bias, okay. Elasticity modulus, that's a new one, I've never seen that. Hmm, the it can the shell can withstand forty thousand kilograms per centimeter squared. What? What's it made out of this? Titanium retentivity, coercivity, squareness. Hmm, that's a you know they really were scraping the barrel, weren't they? Trying to come up for reasons to sell stuff, but uh, yeah, there we go. I can't make out the Japanese, but. It's an ES, so this has got a traditional sh case, has it? Yeah, so that's just, uh, I think, which way are we opening this one? I think we're opening it from here. Is it front opening this one? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's another strange case, so I'm, my experiments in opening this correctly might go awry. Yeah, it's a slim case again, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's, it's, you know, for all the retentivity and stuff, this is the same sort of slim case that they give away with the last of the line HF junk. Yeah, the horrible these. I really, these are one of my least favourite types of cases because of these little retainer clips and it creases all the J card. You know, and they're doing this with an ES tape, which is supposedly the top of the range, and they're putting it in these horrible... Anyway, so, tape itself, though, is very nice. These are, I've seen these ranges before, the ES range. Whoops, oh dear, you can get it here. Well, I love that. It's kind of unique as far as it's got a double window. I love double windowed ones, but it's clear there and clear there, and it's, uh, it's really nice. So, this is the ES2. So, yeah, this... Um, so this will be a double coat for a cobalt because normally you've got the UX which was the single coat, then the UXS which is a double coat, and then the UX ES which was the double coat in a nicer shell, and the UX Pro which was a double coat but with the ceramic guides and stuff. But this should be a nice black tape, I think. Oh yeah, look at that lovely, nice shiny black tape. So yeah, I mean, and I showed you these are very plain and boring and very last of line and cheap stuff even though it's an ES tape but then again it was half the price of the Panasonic PX so maybe this was a cheap tape but anyway that's what we're going to look at let's go and fire up a deck and see how these sound Okay, so I'm going to use the Revox for this because they are so pretty and we want to see them in all their open well glory. Incidentally, some of you have pointed out before that when I've said this deck is running at plus three Dolby scale, it shouldn't be. And you're right, it shouldn't. From the factory, this is a Dolby scale deck, i.e. 200 nano webers per meter. However, going through all correspondence with the guy who I bought this off, who serviced it, he said that he used a Marantz calibration cassette and the Marantz decks I've got are plus three on Dolby scale, hence why this was running at plus three. But I've rectified that. I created a level tape on my Dragon. I've calibrated the Rebox to it now. So now it's back to as it would have been when it left the factory at Dolby scale, 200 nanowebers per meter. So that's all good. So the tune I'm gonna use on this is my latest release as Villa Rosso. If you didn't know, I produce music under the name Villa Rosso. You can find me on all the streaming platforms. And this is a tune I've used before in an unfinished state. And people have asked, oh, when's it gonna be released? When's it gonna be released? So it's gonna be released tomorrow if you're watching this video on the day it was released. So that's the 17th of July. It's gonna be out on all the major streaming platforms. So I'm gonna use it to demo these four cassettes. We'll split it up into little one and a half minute chunks and we can have a see how these cassettes perform with my new release, which is called Sleep.
Okay, let's crank it up a bit. So I cranked that up to peaking around about plus five, plus six there, and the treble was still there. Is this an AR in disguise? It's got a premium shell. It's got the same sort of ready see-through tape. It could be. I guess the only way to really find out would be to bias up an AR in the ZX9 and then plop this in and see if it biases and levels the same. But regardless, this is a very nice sounding ferric. Very nice sounding, very nice looking. I like that one. So let's move on to the Sony ES2. So if I just bias this one up as well. So basically the Sony ES range was available in America because I remember someone on a forum talking about how they were very good for using their Tascam Porter Studios at high speed. And apparently, even though these have got ES written on them, they were sold fairly cheaply in places like Kmart. I guess it's because they were sort of end of the line cassettes. But uh, this is a double coat Sony ferrocobalt, so I'd imagine it's going to be really good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the level down a bit because that was a bit high. I don't want to run this that hot. But what I do like actually, which I've never showed you on this step before, is this set level. When it's sort of getting to the loud part of the music, just hold the set level button and there's a quick burst of loudness and then it sort of automatically sets the level to what it believes is correct for the cassette after it's calibrated it. So that's what I'm going to do here. So let's continue with sleep. And I'll set the levels as we go. Yeah, that performed exactly as I thought it would do. Really well, really smooth. Like I say, a lovely shell. I love shells with double windows. Sony and Denon were the master of them, but yeah, double shell windows. Lovely cassette. Yeah, really like this. They are uh, getting increasingly pricey, but they're worth the money. So let's now go to the Denon spanking new, even though this is probably over 30 years old. I mean, the thing is, the tape in this is going to be DX1 tape. 
or DX, depending where you are. And the DX to me were always like, well, always like nothing. I never saw them in the day, but right now, considering they were their D equivalent, the UR, the um, HF equivalent, to me, they just sound a bit better. It could be the perception, oh, hang on, did that align properly? Yeah, it did. It could be perception insofar as that I just think that they sound better because they're more expensive and rarer. Who knows, but I'm expecting a pretty good performance from this one. So let's now listen to a bit more sleep. And I'm gonna run this at the same level that I run the Sony at, which is peaking about plus two, which is about right. Ooh, that's hissy. Yeah, so it's obviously designed for children or ladies, but yeah, it's a very brown DX1 tape in there. And yeah, it performs great. I mean, it's hissy, of course it is. It's an entry level ferric, but the highs were there, the lows were there. Yeah, pretty and sounding good. Now let's get to the bad boy. Let's get to the metal. And if this has got Maxell MX tape in it, which I'm pretty sure it has. Why would this perform anything other than wonderful? Apart from the Revox doesn't seem to like the leader on it. Okay, Type 4, good. Yeah, like I say, it, it looks such a sad cassette, doesn't it? It looks pretty sad. There's another one, the Japanese um, late, I think around the same type, UD1 and UD2. I have this jokey picture which I put in my Facebook group, which is based on one of those. And they, they do look a really sad cassette. Okay, right. Well, what I'm going to do here is we're going to record it starting at zero and then I will crank it up a bit because it's a metal, obviously. So let's give it some signal. And here is a bit more sleep. Right, crank it.
you know, I, I find sonically the performance of metals very boring. What? Well, they're like this, tear like this, whack in, click, align. My mum could make amazing sounding recordings at peak at plus six on this deck. There's, there's no challenge in it. This is a brilliant sounding cassette, just like pretty much every metal that hasn't deteriorated that I've ever used. It sounds brilliant. Takes loads of signal, crisp and sharp. Wonderful. What more do you want? The truth. So there we go. I mean, I'm not going to try and rank these in order because we've got an entry level type one, a super ferric, a type two and a metal. And that's obviously the order on which to go in. But my thoughts for them are, like I say, really nice looking, very different, performed as good as a entry type one really should. But with a special appeal to those of you who like stuff like the Memorex Clown cassettes, etc. This is the sort of cassette that uh, will only appeal to you apart from there. Very rare and expensive. The GPX, well, it's a Maxell Metal. What do you want? You know, it performed exactly as you thought it would, which was brilliant. So, yeah, and like I say, it's different, it's novel. But I guess it's kind of appealing, this little sideways opening case as well. It's, it's yeah, I really like that, but again, you got to really like it to buy one of these nowadays because these are very expensive cassettes that are very rare. Like I say, I've, I've, I've seen the Type 2 in the UK, but I've never said, oh, come on, don't make me out to be, a, you know, I tell you. Sometimes these wrappers deserve to get ripped. I'm telling you, they certainly do. Cause this one does. This one's doing my Sweden right now. Come on, get over that corner, you miserable bugger. Right, that one can... Just bugger off then, sorry. I have a tolerance and then when you cross it, you get torn up. The PX1, again, could this be an AR in disguise? It's still a really nice cassette. I'm not very sold on the cheapy slim case and the very nondescript J card, but it's a Panasonic cassette, which is a rarity in itself. And yeah, I like that one. And the ES2, what's not to like about a Sony Type 2 with ES on it? I mean, again, this is the most disappointing J card and horrible cheap slim case, which comes with late HFs out of the lot of them. But that doesn't stop it being a really good cassette. And like I said, the wrapper makes it look so premium. Uh, with all that stuff, you know, the elasticity module and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, all brilliant cassettes, all really good and all expensive now. Because the only way to get them is either if someone sends them you, thank you, or if you fight with most of Eastern European flippers on Yahoo Japan auctions. So, yeah, I'm going to leave the Japanese cassettes over to Mark at Retrocore AV, who's just done a really good one on Axia cassettes, if you haven't seen it. Very interesting, very beautiful cassettes. But for me, that's it now. Like I said, don't forget, Sleep comes out on the 17th of July. Go and have a stream. Let's see if I can get over 50 streams on it, unlike most of my other songs. <laughs> and until next time... Thank you for watching and again thank you to Matthew and Peter for sending these and Peter for sending this one which I might do a video on next, who knows, it's a bit rare, it's a bit expensive but um, you know maybe a metal evaporated metal might be worth doing a video on, who knows, hmm. Until then please like and subscribe, stay safe and happy taping, bye bye.